Hey guys, it's Jen from <clears throat> Scan and Cut Canvas and Scale Hub on Facebook. Better turn this around for you. Alright, I am all the time telling you that I cut metal, wood, and leather on my heavy tack mat. Okay, so here's my balsa wood. I will tell you this is the crappiest balsa wood. Oh, it's absolutely horrible. Um, to try to cut this, um, I actually have to wet it in order to get it to cut. Well, you see, it cuts just fine. Um, the approach to this, though, is much different than the actual quality good wood. Um, this requires a few more passes, and I cannot stand this balsa wood. It's almost like a little sponge. Um, but this is the heavy tack mat. You can see, well, let me try to get it. Ugh, look at all this zig I put on there. I love it. Um, it sticks, it holds fast. Okay, so let me show you. It sticks. This stuff does not move. You can plow through it, but when you're done, it easily pops off. That is what I love about zig tacking a mat. If you don't know what I'm talking about, you can search zig and my name on YouTube and see what I'm talking about. However, when you see me put it on a regular standard you know so you can use your paper your vellum your vinyl I put it on but I don't leave any blue I thin it out to make it clear when I heavy tack that's why I have heavy tack written on here so I don't grab this and accidentally use it for my vinyl paper vellum etc fabric <clears throat> okay um, I put this on and you see that blue that's in there I leave it that blue color I make it really really strong so that it grips uh, take a look at my leather and my metal video. You will see this is the mat that I use. Actually, I think the, yeah, you could still see the dragonfly right there that I cut my leather on. Okay, um, there's the stuff when I cut metal. I stick it on there. Okay, um, <clears throat> this mat takes a beating and it loves it. All right, so don't be afraid to make yourself one if you do a lot of kind of, um, not vinyl paper if you do a lot of the odd types of projects that require a heavy tack. Do not put paper on this. Do not put vinyl on this. No fabric on this, okay? This is a heavy tack, all right? Um, sure, if you don't no longer use heavy tack, strip this off and turn it back into a standard tack. It's fully up to you what you do uh, with your mats, okay, if you so choose. I know that I need a mat like this that can grab hold and hang on to stuff, all right, because I'm going to put it through there and make it go. Now let's talk about this balsa wood, okay? Um, understand that in the graining, sometimes you'll come across these striations in here that you may notice the blade hits it and skips it, okay? That's why when we start out doing this, we're going to actually lower our pressure to like a minus six. We're going to set our blade depth at a one, all right? I don't care. This is the only time you'll see me tell you to use a number because it doesn't really matter. We basically want to start to score this, okay? Because you'll see this is the crappiest wood ever. I think it came from China, even though it said it was USA. Eh, someone lied, okay? Um, it was a U, uh, China e packet when it came. It really upset me. Um, but it is what it is, and I needed it quick, so that's what I got. Um, but it cuts terribly, um, and you'll see sometimes it'll hit and it'll skip and it'll chunk out. It's just, it's an awful, but that's a good thing because you'll see what awful balsa cuts like, okay? The good stuff, uh, the stuff that you can get from America will give you a nice even line cut, okay? This stuff, I have to start it at a one depth and make a score and kind of, it takes me a while to get through this stuff. But as you see, it is possible if you are using really crap happy wood to get through it. So I guess this was a blessing in disguise for them to send me this, okay? Because some people do get the really crappy stuff and wonder, how am I going to cut it? It wouldn't be nice if Jen just did a video with, oh, oh, look, it's all the good stuff. Here you go. This is how you do it. No, I prefer to use the crappy stuff so I can show you how to dig yourself out of a hole. All right. Okay, so to get started, I, you could, this wood, oh, it's just terrible, but I'm not going to carry on about that. It's not going to change what I have. All right, so I'm going to pull me out a paper piece of paper towel, okay? Because I just want to wet the front side. Don't wet the back side. If you get the back side wet, it will not stick to your mat, okay? So off camera here, I'm just going to take this and I'm going to spray the front side here real quick. I'm going to get it a good soak. 
All right. Then I'm going to take my paper towel. And I just take my paper towel and lay it over it. And I'm going to soak up any excess. Okay, that way it doesn't start to drip into the back. Okay, so here's the front side, nice and wet. And here's the back side. It got a little bit at the top there, well, maybe a little at the bottom, but that's just how it draws in from the grain, okay? But you'll see it'll almost start to, to kind of curve, yep. Okay, that's fine. I'm going to take it and I'm going to put it up here. I do the one and one, okay? Not a big deal because all the rest of it will stick nice and firm, okay? And we're going to cut that same star. Always make sure that your blade and holder look good. Yep. These uh, deep cut blades are built so well. I mean, they stand up to pretty much anything. I'm going to set mine at a one. Okay, so I see there's a bit of that blade poking out there when I look at it sticking out of the holder. Still has a nice sharp tip on it. Okay. Now let's come up here and take a look at what our pressure is. We want that set to a minus six. And I know it's at a minus one right now. I do minus one for the final cuts. So let's keep hitting that down to a six, okay? I'm gonna give that water a little time to work in. Now with this board, because it's different graining, I have no idea what it's gonna look like because I see a bunch of strong marks coming through here so we may have tons of skips all over and this may not even be a good piece but we're going to take a look at it together all right so let's hit cut and let's hit start Too awfully bad. Let me pull you in there so you can see a little better. Not too bad. Okay, so now I'm going to hit OK and I'm going to hit cut again, not changing the blade depth at all. I want to get that firm score in there. Okay. Did you hear those snaps? So it's still cutting as it's moving along there. I am going to take the blade out. Oh, look at, I got all kinds of little wood pieces up in there. Now, if you use a high quality balsa, which I recommend, you won't have as much problems as I'm having with this, okay? All right. So now that that is nicely scored, okay, I'm going to move my blade up to a three. Okay, my pressure's still a minus six. I'm going to hit cut. And I'm going to hit start. Okay, that's still looking pretty good. Cut. I'm going to do it again at that same blade depth. Okay, now I'm going to bump it up. Because I don't trust this wood, I'm going to a four, going to a four and a half. What I don't want is that wood to wad up in there. I want it to still effectively cut. Okay, I'm taking this out because there is, let me bring it in here. See all those little wood boogies? I want to keep that clean. Because if any of those little particles of wood cover that blade, it's not going to cut. It's just going to smush. So keep that clean. Now remember, if you're using good wood, you will not have this many cuts. Okay? You may have two, three, four cuts, okay? Just to be safe. This is terrible wood, so I am having a terrible time cutting it. Okay, that's still passable because, you know, this is wood, so I can sand off any little is that might come in. 
Okay. So I'm checking the tip, slightly deepening the blade as I go. So that one I went up by two. So now I'm at six. So I'm going to up it again. I'm going to go to about an eight. The deeper I get, the more I can trust the blade depth because I'm getting deeper into the wood. You see my mat. This piece of wood is not moving because I'm using the heavy tack mat. Okay. I'm only going to deepen it by one now because we're getting fairly deep. <clears throat> And this is me experimenting with this wood because I haven't cut. That first star was my very first cut, but that was actually a really, really thick piece. Okay, so let's... I'm going to go up one and a half because I'm really deep into this wood, so I'm not worried about it boogering up on me. And what I'm doing is I'm lifting at the edge there and seeing if this point stays down and it doesn't. Because what that's going to do is that's going to tell me if I'm through or not. And by all means, if you have just straight lines to cut with balsa, do it with a ruler and a straight edge because that's going to be so much easier. But it would also be easier on this too because, you know, it's just a straight line. These have lines, points, angles. That's why it's slightly more difficult. Okay. So I just went up by another one. See if we're getting close. Okay. Now I'm going to go to the end range of my blade. Cut. Start. Now remember, this is the end range of my blade, but I'm still set at a pressure of minus six. Oh, I think we have success. Yay, we do. Okay. Oops, helps if you can see, huh? There we go. So that is what it looks like. Not bad at all. For really crappy wood. Cut really, really well. But you see how I had to kind of find my way through? So what I recommend is when you get or you try your scan and cut, you always want to make the initial score. Okay, so don't try to put your wood down and plow through it with one cut. That's going to make a fail, okay? With this being really bad wood, I made a bunch of initial scores just to get through uh, the really poor quality of it, okay? If you have really good quality, make that initial first score, okay? So cut that first initial layer of those wood fibers, okay? You can do that with a, uh, like a blade depth of a one, okay? Or when you barely see that blade poking out of the holder, whatever that may be. Set your pressure low so that it just kind of scores it. It just knocks that first layer out. That's what you want. You want to be able to get deeper into that wood. Wood. Then when you do it, you can go from like a whatever your blade depth setting is, you can jump four numbers. Then the next time jump another four numbers, okay? It all depends on your wood quality, okay? So this stuff is really bad quality, which I'm, you know, I'm glad because then I got to show you how it'll get through it. You know, it does. It got through it and it looks absolutely beautiful, okay? So you wouldn't be able to tell that this was a really stinky wood. All right, so get through this. Uh, like for myself, now that I know how this wood cuts, what I would do if I wanted to keep this mark on here, uh, pressure of a minus six, uh, I would put one times two, OK? 
okay? So let me get a little marker here. I'll show you what I would do. So here, what I have, the BD, let me write it where it's not, okay, so the, we'll have the blade depth at a one, then I would have the pressure at a minus six, okay, blade, and I would do times two. What that means, my blade depth at a one times two, okay, and then I would go up to a blade depth of a five, okay, pressure would still remain the same, then nine, then I would go right to 12. That's all I would have to do. If yours does not allow you to get to it at a pressure of minus six, then increase pressure, okay? So if you still can't get through it at a blade depth of 12, then start to increase your pressure, okay? And then that'll help you get through it. All right, if you guys have any questions at all, on how to cut balsa wood and again this is my very old blade um, I have never ever changed my deep cut blade so this is one that is over four years old um, you can tell by the way that it looks um, it's just a well-loved blade um, but you can find me over at scan and cut canvas and scale help on Facebook um, and then you can view all the information I have there on your scan and cut. And you can ask questions and all that good stuff. All right, guys. Thanks a lot. And real quick, you may not have to use water either. Um, I, when I use my good stuff, I did not ever have to use water. Only on the really bad stuff did water come into play. And water really does help. All right, guys. Thanks a lot.